Hello, sir. So welcome to Vasily's Garden. Folks, we're out in Craigieburn, and Mike, this is your lovely place. Nice to meet you. Welcome, Maestro. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, I've come out to have a wander around your garden, take us for a tour. I can hardly wait. Yeah? So tell us how long you've been here. Four years. All right. I wanted something a bit more Australian. So ornamental, so no edibles? No edibles, no. And what about now? Oh, lots. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. I was yeah, when we redesigned the garden, yeah. uh, we had a, my son's friend over yeah. to help us, and yeah. he said, oh, we'll do this and we'll do that. And I said, bugger that, I want to eat it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're eating out of the garden now. Yeah, oh, yeah. Fantastic. Time, yeah. So what's your profession? I work in the arts, in yeah. the performing arts, yeah. All right, yeah. yeah. What's Kind what's... of semi-retired now. All right. Currently writing my book, my memoir. All right. Yeah, which is an interesting journey going back to childhood and trying to remember all those details and it's all there you know it's not that you think about it every day but when you start to delve into it all this stuff pops up how long ago are we talking now oh i i'm in my um mid 60s okay so you were dating back to when you were six or seven seven or eight yeah seven or eight wow. yeah that's a good memory you got there mate yeah. So you do you remember what you got in your garden at the moment? Uh, what is your short term memory on the working? Hour of the day. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. That's where the red wine kicks in. Gotcha. All right. So we're going to take a tour around this garden, folks. Sit back, relax. We're going to see some of the wonderful plants you've got in your garden. And Edibles. Maestro, I have so many questions for you. All right. I'm going to need a glass of wine, thanks. <laughs> Trying to make a whole place, a whole garden kind of sculptural. Yeah, are these from the family heritage? No, no, no? I went and bought those at an antique shop. It cost oh. an arm and a leg, by the way. We're looking at ladders here. I love looking at it, you know, and mm. I buy these things, you know, like these things up here, uh, these floaties, they're Just, Japanese boys, I think. But it's also the colour, see all these yeah. rustic colours? Yeah. And they're the colours of nature. And there's little things like <laughs> this was belonged in my childhood. It goes all the way back to my childhood. And I always have an eye open for them. You'll see on the fence I've got some there and I want to get a whole lot more. And what I like is how you got the vine growing through the whole area here. Yeah. So the, was the vine here when you first got here? No, so that's no, only no. a four year old vine? Yep, yep. You yep. planted and, it? And, and it's in a pot. And Where's I can't it start put it from? in the ground because the stormwater drain goes under here. So you've got a silver birch branch trunk that you're using as a stake. Yeah, yeah. A dead branch there, basically, yeah. and it's gone through the whole area. Are you telling me the vine hasn't grown through the pot? I, I don't, dare not look. Okay. <laughs> you won't worry about that one, eh? Just let that one go. The problem in this whole area is the clay soil. Okay, so Craigie Boone's renowned for that. Bad soil, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you can't plant into the ground, so you've decided well, to raise hard, it. Well, it's hard, but I also, as I get older, I want to be able to kind of <laughs> sit here and weed the bloody thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you have been taking advantage of these little seeds that you've got on the side. They're perfect high too, mind you. Oh, look, look they yeah. come into their own in the summer. We have an annual summer barbecue where okay. my son's friends come around and our friends come around and there's two generations and it's yeah. fantastic and yeah. everyone loves sitting here. Some are sitting, some are crawling. Okay. <laughs> now tell us about the garden bed itself. Now you've got it razor, you've got two sleepers high. Now you're using uh, old recycled timber here, hardwood. Yep. Red gum, the old uh, railway sleepers, but you've also got it lined inside to preserve the timber from rotting away and being in direct contact with the soil. What did you fill the actual bed up with? Uh, we we got a, a truckload of uh, organic soil. And just, just organic soil, yeah, yeah, and just filled it up. I I, I feed it with horse manure from okay. one of the local farms. Yes, fresh or dry? Would it be straight fresh. out of the back? Fresh. I, I do it. When I decommission the summer crop. Oh, okay, so at the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. and then I th throw all that in, yeah. and then I just get the hose on high pressure and break it apart. Are you kidding me? No. So you throw it in there with all the lumps and clumps? Yeah, 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 and then and break then it apart. And just sit there with a the hose. Yeah. Bit of a game, afternoon entertainment. Yeah. I dare say over the season, you know, a couple of years that you've been doing this, it's actually dropped on its own, is that correct? Correct. Yeah, so, yeah. and that's a good sign to show that you've got active bacteria in the soil, it's actually working. Right. Yeah, so they're eating away all the organic matter, and that's why it's depleting, so you need to keep topping it up as you are. Oh, wow. Broad beans, do you dig them in at the end? Are they productive, first of all? Very productive. Yeah. Very productive. What would be your most successful and productive plant in the veggie range? Oh. There's, there's, there's a lot. Uh, the, the broad, the, the broad beans are definitely one. The kale. Yeah. Um, oh, look, there's. All I'm, of them. I'm quite yeah. happy. You know. Look, Overall. Yeah. You call these spring onions or yeah. shallots? You can call them whatever you like, as long yeah, as they taste things. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can cut those back down. They keep re-sprouting up That's too. That's what I do. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's right. Now, and the mint I use a lot because uh, I go to the gym every day yeah? and I make up a, a mint, mint and lemon. 
and drink, um, ginger uh, drink. Before or after the gym? Before the gym. Oh, so I boil up. it all up. Yep. And I, I, that's what I take to the gym in my bottle. Okay, so everybody so else does a protein shake. It never shake. takes over because yeah, yeah. I'm always using it. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. And the fact is that you got it all fresh here and it does taste great. If you like Vasily's Garden, then you'll love Vasily's Garden to Kitchen magazine. Available at all good news agencies. Subscribe now at vasilysgarden.com. Hello, folks. Well, I had an email from one of our regular viewers and he was saying how troubled he was by fungus on his feet. And he'd had it for quite some time and he just couldn't get rid of it. So there was a very, very old recipe in one of my herbal medicine books. And it's from the maybe late 50s, early 60s. And what it was, it's cumin tea to work as an anti-fungal medication and this is your standard seed, cumin seeds. And what we did, it was about this much, like two teaspoons of cumin seed, put into a separator here to be able to just get that tea to work. So we take it off, pour it into there, put the boiling water in and put it in and allow it to fully draw and cool. Now that's a long drawing process that is going to happen. But what will occur is the antifungal mechanism that's associated with this works fantastically. And what we got him to do was to actually pour it over his feet and allow it to air dry. There was another addition in this very old textbook that I looked at and that was standard common garden variety thyme, the plant thyme and you just have a few sprigs and you can put it in with your cumin and make cumin and thyme tea because they're both anti-fungals and they work beautifully. So give it a go and the main thing is is that you allow it to draw for a longer period and you get that wonderful aromatic, you can really smell it. The wonders of herbs and the way that we are able to get them to work and these are just common herbs. Nothing flash, nothing fancy, nothing expensive and readily available throughout this wonderful country that we live in. So folks, until next time, find happiness in every moment. What do you reckon, a little bit of chilli for the chilli? Uh, you go for it. You what, you're not in? No, oh, no, I don't <laughs> like, I like eating it like that. <laughs> This week. Yeah, no. okay. No thanks. Sweet. No thanks. <laughs> but this week. Bloody hell. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Almost like capsicum. There's no bite in it at all. No. It's one of those plants I've bought at Bunnings that kind of is $2 on, oh, on see, the see, there you go. There's your problem there already. Right, okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's nice. It's actually quite nice, no, eh? It's like... Um, so the whole like season's capsicum. gone by and you haven't eaten one chilli because you were worried about how hot it was, eh? Yeah. <laughs> well, over here to the right we have growing some horseradish. Now, you've done some research on horseradish. Yes. Now, extensive research suggests that you do not plant that in the ground. Correct. For the reason being that it can overtake the garden Correct. completely? Yeah. So how long have these been in these pots? Um, three years. Three years? Yeah. So it's you, you, yeah, you said to me you haven't harvested yet. No. Are you kidding me? Three years and you haven't harvested? Yeah, that's right. Wow. Wow. Well, you should do it just before summer so you can replant for spring growth again. Oh, OK. So if you're going to wait till summertime, this okay, will fill up a bit, a bit more, but it looks like it's already quite full. Ah, OK. So, I, I, and I, I'll have to um, research what I actually do with the roots. I know you can turn them into a horseradish. Um, what, oh, you mean how do you... Process it. Process it. Yeah. Just grate it, use it in your food, make a juice out of it if you oh, like. OK. Do you see what I'm about to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, go, go Let's have it. a look and see what's going on inside. Because it's dormant now, it's quite safe to divide, separate. But I've got a feeling... It's so go. compact. Oh, yeah, here we there go. Here we are. Let's have a look at this. Three years old, you said? Yeah. I thought they'd be bigger than that. Yeah. What are you feeding it? Anything? 
Uh, Jeez, there's nothing of it. That's them. more like it. Yeah. yeah, but there's nothing of it. I mean, three years old, they should have been a brute like that on it. Okay, so what should I be doing? Put them in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll see them grow. Yeah. Oh, they, that's more like Oz. Yeah, but that's tiny. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not much of it. You see all this, you chop all this up, it'll grow into another plant. So, yeah, it hasn't grown as much as I would have expected it in three years. You know what we do? We just spread the love in here. You're putting it in my garden? No, I'm just putting the compost in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never forget me, will you, now? Never forget you. <laughs> if you're going to grow horseradish, give it some room to grow, mate. That's just compost. You know that. Yeah. There we go. OK. All right. Great stuff. The best way to look after your plants is with Vasili's Easy Hand Spray. Order your sprayer now, available only at vasilisgarden.com. As much as we love eating our grains, seeds, nuts and even legumes, unfortunately all these contain high levels of phytic acid and enzymes, which can raise the risk of iron and zinc deficiency and leave you feeling depleted. To counteract this, you can activate your nuts and seeds by soaking them in filtered water for 8 hours and then rinsing them. This will remove phytic acid and help your body absorb the nutrients as well as prevent gastrointestinal issues. In today's smoothie, I'm adding half a cup of activated walnuts, two centimetre piece of fresh turmeric root, which is a powerful herb and can be added to a variety of dishes. It has many healing properties and supports the growth of good bacteria, which is the key to maintaining ultimate gut health and a strong immune system. I'm also adding one cup of baby spinach and there is no limit when it comes to the amount of green leafy veggies you can consume daily. It is so important that you feed your body nutritious foods that are a powerhouse of antioxidants and packed with heaps of health promoting benefits. And the rest of the ingredients are one frozen banana, two dried figs, a teaspoon of coconut oil, one cup of oat milk, which you can easily make at home, and a teaspoon of your favourite nut spread. So the first stages of blending takes about 30 to 50 seconds, where the blender extracts the air out of the container. The SV500 has an ultra-high strength 3D stainless steel blade and a whopping three and a half horsepower motor, able to pulverise any ingredient you add. This is so delicious and it makes a great breakfast smoothie. For more beautiful recipes just like this, visit our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. Enjoy and see you next time. You've also got composting that you've got doing here, yeah. so you're adding that into the garden to replenish where otherwise it'd be starving and you've got all your green waste coming in. Yeah. Are they successful? Yes, the compost yeah. bins are very yeah. successful. So we've got two types here. What's going on? Explain. Well, this is uh, this this produces the compost. Please see the, see the tap down here. How do you? T okay. It's it's yeah. It's kind of tricky. Because, um, <laughs> a little bit. Got, got to get a little takeaway container. And sit there and pour and that into there. there. Now I, I store it in these bottles, and unfortunately I've run out right now, so it needs to be done. But is it heavy? It is this unit heavy? Oh yeah. So that's got to touch the ground. Can we have a look inside? What's going on in here? Yeah. So it's a compost bin and it's got juice at full. Okay. What have you got growing in here? Wandering Jew. Yeah. Bit of everything. Yeah. Wow. How long does it take for this to break down? Um, a couple of months. And you get the juice out of the bottom of that? Yeah. And this one? And then in the summer, when I, before I start the, um, the beds, the beds, yeah. I decommission the winter crop, yep. and before I put them in tomatoes and all that, we'll take this out and yeah. we'll get the bottom part of the compost. Which is broken down. So yeah. Yeah. the composting process takes too much. You get all the organic matter that's broken down at the bottom, throw it in the bed, and you throw your green scraps back in here. Yeah. And you do the same with this one. And but the other thing I do is see the worms. Yeah, what do you do with those? Put them in the garden. Beautiful. Composting normally works around 55 degrees, and that's when the bacteria, composting bacteria, kicks in. And when you get that optimum temperature, the break in down prices really activates and works pretty quick. Well, that probably happens in the summer. Yeah, with yeah. the heat, hotter days. So it slows down, obviously, in winter time. Yeah. So from here, we go back into the garden bit and we cycle it all yeah, around yeah, again. Yeah, yeah.
Good work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a great recycler. Mm -hmm. We even recycle water from the kitchen. All the vegetables get washed in that and stuff, and that, that goes into the garden. Oh, good. Oh, so you, you I'm, don't... Yeah. Like you, I'm an old hippie. And we were right, you know, us we hippies. Were. We yes, were right. We were. They're now called greenies, you know. Oh, OK. We're going to hug a tree now. This is a beautiful space you've created here, mate. It really is. And it's always evolving. That's what it looks like to me. So it's not complete. No, and it never is. It never will be. Always changing? Always changing. Yeah. And you created these hanging baskets yeah, yourself? Yeah. I just yeah. stick something in it and see if yeah. it <laughs> 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 well, What can we stick in it now? What do you reckon? <laughs> so you've got some string of beans here, string of pearls yeah. going on. Don't you love the way yeah, they spy this? Yeah. I love it. I love it. So you, and one plant will make you many. Yeah, and that's yeah, the thing yeah. with all plants, and that's basically gardening for you. Well, it is in that way. Gardening should be like that. Whether you're sitting and relaxing or actually out there gardening and getting your fingernails dirty into the yeah. soil, yeah, yeah. It's, it is all about relaxing and meditations and, and calming. Yeah, absolutely. So it's earthing yourself again. Absolutely. And I know everybody who loves their garden will agree with us on that 100%. Yeah. Now, and every garden is different in its own right. Yep. You know, it's, it's, it's an extension of your character, your being, your, your own personality. Yeah. And I can see that you are very creative. You said you're in, you're in the arts, yeah. the field of arts. What sort of plays, theatre is it, music, what uh, are you doing? It's, it, no, it's more kind of radical um, performance arty type stuff. For example, in 1984, I lived in a cage at Taronga Park Zoo as a human exhibit for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I stumped him. <laughs> Did they throw peanuts at you or something? Well, none of that happened, and that was what was great about it. I, I, I thought I'd be given a hard time, but you people were in a, loved it. You were in a cage. I was the official Homo sapien exhibit in the gallery of animal exhibits called Zoo. Healthy Habits Smoothies book is now available at all QBD bookstores or online at Vasily's Garden. And we're out in the garden, folks. We are looking at a cherry tree. Now, you've pruned this down recently. Correct? Yes. Why? Because, uh, see these leaves? It gets this black, kind of lychee type grub. Okay. And I want to be able to start to control it next summer. Yeah, that's because true. Because it's just, look at that, you yeah. know? Skeletonized. It's because it's called a pear and cherry slug that appears on your tree and it eats away like that. It yeah. scratches away on the surface. Yeah. There's many ways you can control it organically. Uh, some of the old practices was to get some of the wood ash from your fire, obviously when it's cooled down, and dust it on the leaves. First, ah. slightly spray the leaves with water so they're moist, then dust the wood ash over it. Except, this is what, what I want to talk to you about, it's, I'm not getting fruit from it. Is it because it needs a few seasons to settle in? I mean, this is what, three years old? Have you had any fruit? A little. What variety is it? It's sour cherry. So, Napoleon? I don't the... know the answer to that. Yeah, so it's not a self-pollinator. Did you know about that? No. Can I ask? And what does that mean? It needs a partner. What, another so, tree, a, cherry tree? Another cherry tree. Like a oh. Stella or a Star Crimson or a Black Boy. They're varieties of cherries, which will help pollinate the flowers on this one and set fruit. So do you get lots of flowers on this? Yes, but, but I don't get the fruit. OK, so get yourself another variety. Obviously, you haven't got a cherry nearby here in your neighbourhood. Yeah. That, that's why you need to get one in your backyard to help it pollinate. Excellent. OK. Advice. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice salvia, by the way. Yeah. Now, you've got some concerns about this orange tree. Tell me. In the spring, there's a lot of blossom. Yeah. They all fall off. OK. And look, we've got two um, two pieces of fruit. Yeah, one, one there, over there, one, one over here. here. And that's all of maybe 50 blossoms, we get two pieces of fruit. My gut feeling is it's not getting enough sun. What do okay. you reckon? Well, it probably isn't getting enough sun, and you can compensate that by putting some of that black grit that I told you earlier on, oh, yeah? which is the calcium nitrate or calcium silica, which will help set the flowers to fruit. Black grit is the product. Sprinkle a handful around the base, water it in. I dare say wait for another cycle before you dis decide to transplant, because my gut feeling is you're going to pull this out. Yeah. yeah, I was going to relocate it out the front. So let's work with what it is. Let's put some calcium nitrate or silica around the base, some black grit, handful every three months, water it in, and let's see what it does in the next cycle of flowers. And I okay. reckon it'll actually set fruit. It'll work, that product will work with all your plants that are struggling, except for your cherry tree. That needs a pollinator. Well, this one doesn't. This one will sell fertile. Uh, but putting that there will actually keep the flowers on the tree long enough so it can ripen. Excellent advice. So where are we going to start from? Well, let's let's grab a, a, a bit of bread. Okay. Bit of and bread. Uh, let's start with the, the, the apricot jam right. from the tree, um, and maybe with a bit of cheese. 
So these are from your tree. You these harvested? are from the tree from last season. Okay. Um, Let's just do that. And I'm, I'm like the garden itself. I'm learning All right. to do this. And I'm just learning how to eat too here now. I'm just following <laughs> you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. That's impressive. Now, this one I don't think is quite so successful as the zucchini relish. Zucchini. Mm, I'm not happy with this one. What's wrong with it? Um. I like it. Yeah? Yeah. Well, there you go. Spicy, spicy or? No, 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 not spicy, spicy. Wow. I like this. And I remember as a child pulling the cord, which released the, the whistle. And I went, because I'm writing this in the book, and I'm going, do I call it a horn or do I call it a whistle? So I ring up the museum. And um, they say, oh, no, 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 it was definitely a whistle. It became a horn when the diesel engines came in. Okay. But yeah, I think cataloguing our history is really important. And in a way, that's what your shows are doing. You know, you, you, you have focused on, on and what I loved about your shows always is you're focused on those wonderful wog backyards. Yeah. Yeah. And I would learn. It's, uh... I would learn. From your programs as Thank a you. novice gardener. Well, it's out there, and people have come here. They've migrated to Australia. It's our history of Australian gardens, yeah. uh, whether they are Australian flora um, or plants from other parts of the world. They've brought them with them. It's a way of living for many people, and it's a, it's a way of um, exploring and learning and sharing with others. So, absolutely. And I appreciate your time too, giving giving to us and uh, opening your wonderful garden gate to allow us to come through and venture through your backyard. And now I'm going to wipe out the zucchini relish. <laughs> <laughs> and then finish off with the plums. Let's these get are, these are the plums? It. These are the plums, right? Yep. Yeah, I'll have them afterwards. So let's get stuck into them. Okay, let's do it. You want some of this? Uh, let me check the um, what's in the oven. You check the oven.